Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. And this is one of the paid requests for Lucas. Thanks for, uh, really do appreciate that, Lucas. Thank you. Uh, for those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. I do have a Cash App as well. Those links are down below in the info box for those who want to wish to do so. Thank you. I'll get to it as soon as I can. It could be for pretty much any type of video. And Lucas been one of those guys been very gracious and he sent me a good amount of requests and one of them was to review watch a review of the Batman season 2 and the other was to first time react to this episode called Grundy's Night so I figured I watch all the other episodes of the Batman season 2 aside from this that way I'll just I'll react to this and then I'll do the review for Batman season 2 and then try to have those uploaded the same day but, obviously by the title, it seems like it's about Solomon Grundy, which was in the comics. And, the Batman Season 2, I would say I don't mind it. It's okay. I thought it was a step down from the first season, but I don't hate it or anything. And no, I will not be showing the video because YouTube's copyright system is completely hypocritical and broken. So it would just be me reacting to it. Sorry if that makes people mad, it's just how it is. Blame YouTube and their hypocrisy. But, uh, yeah, I guess if you have this episode somewhere, it's 20 minutes and 30 seconds. I'm paused at the beginning. Thanks once again, Lucas. Really do appreciate it. 3, 2, 1, pressing play. So you have the Bugs Bunny Warner Brothers logo, and then we have pumpkins. All right. Okay, it's a Halloween episode because we got trick or treaters going up to the spooky mansion up the hill. <coughs> One is dressed as, I guess, an alien, and the other's a pirate. I don't know why the kid's got a plunger on his head, but okay. <laughs> oh, what is he supposed to be with the plunger on his head? This woman looks like she'd be in Strooby, well, sisters. Sister, sister. These two, uh, they should be in a Strooby Doo episode. <laughs> I just, I never, I never realized Gotham had a swampland area. Solomon Grundy. So they're telling the story about a zombie was brought back to attack the architects of Gotham City. Haunt the descendants and return every Halloween. Did Gotham always have a swamp? I guess I just... Didn't realize it until now. <clears throat> I want one candy from you. You probably have razor blades in it, you hose. Hole one and hole two. Bitch and bitchier. You two definitely laugh like witches. Well, I can't really say I feel bad for whatever happens to you two. Hand comes right through the damn painting. Solomon Grundy, there you go. I don't mind the design, I like the look of him. I think the face with the, the white hair looks pretty cool. I like the design. Uh, so now we have the opening. I did watch season one. I thought it was actually pretty decent. Season two, I didn't mind. I thought it was stepped down, but I didn't mind. I would say I do not like this theme song. I think it's just very weak theme song. 
I just because I'm yes, I know it's not fair, but I'm reminded of Batman the Anime the series, but even Batman Beyond Store and the opening theme seem really unique, like really cool. This just kind of weak guitar, I don't know. Of course we see the different designs of the villains, which a lot of people were not a fan of, like Joker looks like if Rob Zombie designed them. Catwoman, etc. Uh, Bane, when he tastes the venom and becomes this like red creature, hulking creature. F some of them I didn't mind. I would say like Firefly, I didn't really care for the design. Rid Riddler, he kind of looked like Chris Angel, but Robert England voices him, which is a great plus. Uh, of course, Alfred is Sherlock Holmes. That's a nice little. Oh, Jeff Matsuda, I definitely recognize that name. That's a producer credit. <laughs> so, little kids have Joker, Catwoman, and Penguin costumes. <laughs> Do you imagine that, though? That'd be like if, I don't know, a kid went out dressed as... Uh, I guess they haven't killed anybody yet, but goes like Jeffrey Dahmer, Ted Bundy, and you know, something like that. Now I do like the voice cast here, you know, Rita Romano. Who's the voice of Spider-Man on the PlayStation 1 video game I have. And then Alpha is voiced by Neil Duncan. A.K.A. Alistair Duncan. Who I remember from Split Second. That's Detective Dick Durkin. We need big, big fucking guns. <laughs> Worked with Rudger Howe in Split Second. He voices Alfred in this, so. Very cool voice acting there. Also, like, Robert Englund is the Riddler. Mitch Pileggi is Commissioner James Gordon in the final episode of Season 2. It's really cool stuff. Even Batman, you know, it's a bit of a different design. Yes, I would say I prefer the Kevin Conroy and the way he looked in Batman the Animated Series, but... I don't mind it in this one. It didn't bother me too much. So these two tell him Batman they got their stuff stolen and they're you already tell they're demolished. Well, another place he's making himself at home. <clears throat> yeah, Selman Grundy definitely has a bit of a Frankenstein monster aspect with the way he talks, among other stuff. Got the little smoke bombs there. One thing I will say a uh, positive about this show, because I do like it, is I definitely like a lot of the fight scenes throughout the show. You definitely felt like a bit more of a fight oriented, action driven show compared to. Because Batman did fight in the other shows, but just this one felt like there was a bit more of that featured. I think they did a pretty decent job with the choreography. Where it does feel like Babin's a badass quite a bit of times. <clears throat> Damn, snuck, sneak attack him. Just beating the shit out of Batman, goddamn. 
Na si... In real life, he would have slammed his foot down and smashed Batman's head like a grape. Wham, and then you just have a bloody pulp where Batman's head used to be, but... It's a kid's show, and of course they can't do that. <laughs> but it's like, well, why wouldn't he just go up and just slam his foot down on Batman's face and just completely cave it in? Because <laughs> then there'd be no Batman show anymore. <laughs> Of course, a kid in a Batman costume finds him. How convenient. Man, that kid got a lazy costume. Just a, a bed sheet over his head. <laughs> this guy's like, hey, thanks Batman for saving my home. Everything's gone. Did that guy like have a bunch of stuff in his mailbox? Damn. <laughs> Clean out your mailbox sometime, dude. <laughs> Shit. Oh, so Solomon Grundy's going to go to Bruce Wayne Manor. <clears throat> They're going to say, how the hell would Solomon Grundy know the secret clock door? It's ironic, he says that he doesn't want to believe in the Boogeyman 2 when the only film made based on the show was the Batman vs. Dracula. Which, that, should, that review should be up by the time this is up, because I, I do quite like that movie. I think that would be my top five favorite Batman animated films, along with The Dark Knight Returns, Batman Under the Red Hood, Batman Beyond, Return of the Joker, um... Gotham by Gas, I remember not mining. And Public Enemies, I remember not mining, so. But Ben vs. Dracula, I would put it in my top five somewhere. So Alfred is telling the story about how this cult. So the regular poor folk wanted revenge and they rise up the zombie to get at the rich people to let them feel what they felt. <laughs> Bruce was too bored with your story, Alfred. He said, fuck it. <laughs> I'm gonna leave. That's true. I mean... I remember there was a costume he had, or the way the costume was made to look, where it was in the Killer Croc episode in Season 2, Swamped or whatever, where a good chunk of Batman's costume was black, like this slick oil black, little bit of blue look. I thought that looked really cool, I kind of wish they used more of that, or made the costume look more like that, but of course they go with the, the classic gray. Because I also like the first Batman I saw was Batman 89, and that's what Batman in, in black with the yellow in the middle, so that's the one I always gravitate towards. Oh, Solomon Grundy, there you go. Of course, it's fog. What is it, Silent Hill? Where'd the fog come from? Now it looks like Jack the Rippers will come out with the way <laughs> these alleyways are like. Where's Jack the Ripper? Actually, isn't is that what Gotham by Gaslight was? Kind of like Jack the Ripper type of tale? Been a while since I've seen that.
Who the hell is this guy? Sorry about the clearing of the throne, though that's annoying. So we got our ad break. About to our regularly scheduled program where we got chit and thrown to a wax museum sign. Damn like a headbutt or something. Okay. I guess when he mentioned the mud, I should have known. Just to be fair, I didn't see that coming. I'll give it that. That's one thing I thought was disappointing. Was they set up like a really interesting thing at the end of season one, where Bruce Wayne's buddy is now Clayface and. There's a lot more that could be developed. But, yeah, pretty quickly, just changed to a bad guy in, in Season 2, I thought. Felt the band anticlimactic. I thought they could have done a lot more with that. And I kind of wish it was the actual Solomon Grundy. Maybe because I'm, I really like Batman vs. Dracula, so I'm fine with them going up against some type of more supernatural foe, but... I guess, you know. <laughs> I like this. They, yeah, shapeshifter in a rat wax museum. So now, <laughs> where could he be? He could be anywhere. Could look like anything. So now he's looking like a Martian. Is it going to look like the other creatures throughout it too? If so, that'd be kind of a cool idea. No, he's about the clay face. That'd be cool if he starts looking like all the other creatures. Talk about pulling your leg. <laughs> well, yeah, that's smart. Good way to follow his tracks. Mr. Parrish. Do not perish. <laughs> Don't die, buddy. Don't die. Yeah, right into to his safe. Don't get locked in there like... Two faced did you in Batman, Batman Forever? Ah, okay, that was clever. That was clever. He looked like the, it made it look like the safe door. <laughs> Guess you don't like being fried, do you? Shit. Oh, I don't love one of these mannequins now. I was going to say, you really... I don't know why you're trying to tick them. You know that's not going to work out the best. Like you want to keep your distance away from something like Clayface. Huh. 
<laughs> bon appetit, bitch. <laughs> Should have been a lot more accurate with those arrow shots. Would have been the steaming pile mess. Drop the wax there right onto him. Treat your treat, motherfuckers. Ah, the actual Silman Grundy. Or is, I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm assuming it is. Or, I mean, to be fair, I guess that you always argue we never saw Clayface go to jail, so. By, by the way, how many of these people escape? He could have escaped already again. He's already out there. <laughs> so. So. Don't be surprised because I do have to take a break and I got stuff to do in an hour or so. And I'll come back to actually to do the review. Don't be surprised if I do the review for Batman Season 2 and I talk about Grundy's Night. And I'm like, I, I keep mistaking that ending for, oh yeah, Clayface is still alive. <laughs> because, you know, my brain is not as smart as it used to be. But overall... So if you see that, then yes, you know, I'm, I meant that, yeah, Summon Grundy, maybe a possibility we'll see him in the future, although I highly doubt it. I didn't mind it. I didn't mind that episode. I thought it was okay. I, I like the Halloween motif. I think that's a nice setting for Batman. I thought that was cool they utilized that. I thought that... I liked the Summon Grundy... Aesthetic. I like the design of the character. I thought that you know some decent bits of action. The ending, like the very end, I thought was a bit. I don't. When I say anticlimactic, I don't know. How I'll think about, it, but it was cool. There was in a wax museum. I again, I think it would have been even cooler if he kept tur if he tip turned all these creatures to use different tactics to fight Batman. Or I'm gonna, okay, I'm going to be a vampire and try to bite him. Now I'm going to be this creature. It'll be this figure and use all this to, to attack him. And have like all the creatures of Halloween to attack Batman in this one shape-shifting figure. I mean, other than that Martian and then the mannequin, that's really all he turned into. I kind of wish he did more of that. I think that could have been a bit more of an exciting finale. I didn't see coming there was Clayface, so to be fair, that uh, I can respect it for that. Part of me kind of wishes it was the actual Solomon Grundy. To, like I said during the commentary, I, I liked Batman vs. Dracula, so maybe that's in my brain, so I kind of wanted to see more of that type of stuff here, but you know, it is what it is. But yeah, with that said, did not mind it. That was pretty decent. And I like the show itself. Like, there's really not a whole lot on the show that's maybe bad. Like I said, the the clay face him quickly turned to a bad guy. I thought they did that too quick, too fast. So that rose me a bit the long, uh, a bit the wrong way because I think there's a lot more you could have milked out of that character and that concept of this guy slowly with all this stuff coming on slowly becoming a bad guy, but they just decide to rush it. With that one episode, that was uh, one or two episodes before this, but yeah, overall, cool to see Solomon Grundy referenced, like the design, 
like the Halloween motif atmosphere look to it. Uh, the Watts Museum is a cool setting for your third act. And like I said, Batman, for the most part, the action scenes are nicely choreographed. And it goes at a pretty fast pace. I mean, they're 20 minutes long. By the time you start getting to it, it's done. And it's hard for me to get mad on stuff like that. Where it's 20 minutes. It's okay. It was a fun time. I had a fun enough time. And uh, I like the designer clay face. Uh, the face, the eyes. That looks pretty cool. And. It's interesting he kept calling him Clayface. He never calls him Bennett. So I guess to try to. Focus on. It's not Bennett anymore. Bruce Wayne's buddy. It's just Clayface. Does he, I don't think he one time says calls him Bennett. And I guess like he wanted to just steal. But he wanted to just kill. He wanted to screw up the Founding Fathers, but I guess he just wanted to steal stuff, but... Is that more so because he feels they wronged him and how he became this creature, or I guess just... You think there'd be, like, more easier ways to make money? <laughs> Again, with the way you just shapeshift into a security guard, go into a bank, and, uh... Hey, can I check to see what's in here? Oh, sure! Not the guy I'll steal a bunch of stuff, leave, and then... There you go. <laughs> so it seems like if it's for money, there's a lot of quicker, easier ways for Clayface, a shapeshifter, to do that. But I did something else in mind. Which they, they, they explain a little bit, to be fair. But it just... Like I said, I kind of wish it was the actual Solomon Grundy. But as is, didn't mind the episode of what it was. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. Thank you, Lucas. Really appreciate it. This should be uploaded at the same time as the, the Batman Season 2 review. Thank you for your generosity, and uh, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye for now.